I'm Pastor Robert Stutes from Mount Pleasant United Methodist Church in Roanoke, and I'm happy to welcome you to our online worship for Palm Sunday, April 2nd, 2023. I'm actually out of Virginia this weekend down in Houston, Texas, enjoying some basketball, but we've prepared this Palm Sunday worship for those of you who can't be with us in person. At our church building on Palm Sunday morning, we're happy to welcome Joy Sylvester Johnson as our guest preacher for the day. We'll, if we're able to get a good copy of her message um, by video, we'll be posting that later. But there's a meditation that's included in this um, online version for you this morning. And I pray that God's blessings will be with you in this Palm Sunday time. I invite you now to join with me in our Palm Sunday call to worship. Give thanks to God, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Hosanna. We give thanks to God who answers us, for God is our saving help. The stone the builders rejected is now the cornerstone. Hosanna. Our salvation is at hand. It is marvelous to behold. Hosanna. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Come save us, Lord. Hosanna. Give thanks to God, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Hosanna. Join with me in this prayer of confession for Palm Sunday. Let us pray. We confess that we are not so different from those who welcomed Christ into to Jerusalem waving palm branches, yet later shouted, crucify him, or remained silent in the face of injustice. We too have betrayed you, Lord Jesus, by our sins both secret and known. Yet you died for people like us and you rose on the third day that we might be redeemed. For the sake of Jesus Christ, do not hold our sins against us. O Jesus Christ, our King of glory, we have not been outspoken for you. We have not called for your death, but too often we fail to shout our hosannas. Too often we fail to show our delight in the salvation you have won for us. Help us to see your glory. Draw us closer to you, that we may become more faithful, and that we might be more joyful servants of you, our King. We hear the words of Psalm 31. I trust in you, O Lord, 
I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from my enemies and from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. In Christ, God hears. God answers. God sets us free. In Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our Lenten meditation for today continues from this series from Holgrim Petterson of Iceland from over 400 years ago, the words that he shared that are precious to the Christians in that country. Hear the meditation. Thick darkness covered all the land, all from the sixth hour onward. The sun withdrew its light at noon for nearly three full hours. My God, we hear his terrible cry. Oh, why have you forsaken me? Remember, soul, this sorrow. The hardship, gloom of sin and grief are like a weight upon me. So now my soul no longer sees the radiance of your heaven. Jesus, sweet son of righteousness, I sadly weeping now confess, hear my distress and torment. Abandoned, cried God's son, am I, when frightful pains assailed him. So now I know that when I die, he never will desert me. Because the Lord cried out in pain, our most great Lord will hear again my sad and tearful pleading. Now when the sunlight fails for me, I lose my sight and hearing. When voice and language fade away with death's great darkness nearing, remember, blessed Lord, the plea of your dear Son upon the tree, and into light now lead me. For our centering prayer, use these words with each breath in, the hardship, gloom of sin and grief, with each breath out, are like a weight upon me.
We have just one more week of the season of Lent, but I encourage you to continue to use the Show Me Prayer each day during this season and pay attention to the answers that God gives you. Thanks to those of you who have shared either in our live worship service or who have emailed me or contacted me and let me know um, your experiences with the Show Me Prayer. Remember the prayer, Dear Lord, just for today, please show me one special way in which I can share light and love to someone. Show me one thing I need to stop doing or saying, and show me one special thing that I can learn about you. During the next couple of weeks, we have several opportunities for you to take Holy Communion. We're encouraging everyone to take advantage of as many of those as you can, but in particular to make sure at least once you have the opportunity to come to the Lord's table. You'll see that schedule in front of you um, this coming Wednesday, April 5th at 5 in the afternoon. We'll be having a communion service that we've invited our Wow Wednesday families to be a part of, but anyone is welcome at this very brief communion service. The kids will have been there all afternoon, so it's not going to be a long service. Um, but if you're not able to be with us on Monday, Thursday, you may want to come and join us um, for this Holy Week experience on Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday at five in the sanctuary. And then two opportunities on Monday, Thursday, a brief service again at 12 noon um, during the day, and then an evening service at 7 p.m. on Monday, Thursday. For Easter morning, we'll be including a brief communion at sunrise. We'll be gathering, um, hopefully out, outdoors, depending on the weather, out in front of the entrance of the church um, across the street from the school parking lot, 6.30 a.m. for a brief meditation, communion, and be on your way. It's not a lengthy service. And then the Sunday after Easter, Sunday, April 16th, communion will be a part of our regular Sunday morning service. I know we're changing the schedule up a lot, so I want you to be aware of that. And then back in May, we'll be back on the, on the schedule for participating in um, the first Sunday communion um, on the first Sunday of May. Uh, I hope to see you at least once during this time. If you're not able to get out or you have... Um, issues about being in a in a crowd, um, let us let us know. We'll be happy to arrange a home communion time with you. We want to have as many as people as possible um, gather at the Lord's table during this Lent Easter season. Our Palm Sunday scripture reading, Matthew 21, verses 1 through 11. When they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus gave two disciples a task. He said to them, Go into the village over there. As soon as you enter, you will find a donkey tied up and a colt with it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that their master needs them. He sent them on their way. And Now this happened to fulfill what the prophet said. Say to daughter Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the donkey's offspring. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the donkey and the colt and laid their clothes on them. Then he sat on them. Now a large crowd spread their clothes on the road. Others cut palm branches off the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds in front of him and behind him shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up. Who is this? they asked. The crowds answered, It's the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Thanks be to God. As I've told you, I'm not the preacher of the day at Mount Pleasant United Methodist Church this weekend. We're happy to welcome a guest preacher, and we'll be trying to get a good copy of the video of that message to share with you um, later. But I did find a, a message to share with you. This is not original. It's something I just want to share. It did not have a specific name associated with it, but it comes from the um, United Methodist Church Discipleship Worship website for Palm Sunday, and I thought it was an appropriate message to share with you today. This is the day that the Lord has made, for us, because of us. It could be argued that of all, out of all these high and holy days, this one is the most human. This holy week is a divine and human encounter. Some might suggest it is the divine and human encounter. But this day of palms and passion might be the most human day of this whole event. Next Sunday, Easter, is God's day. 
The event is God's, and we simply receive it like the gift that it is. Two days before that, Good Friday, the day where sin is exposed in all its ugliness, although some might say it is also the day when agape love is revealed in all its glory and wonder. One day before, Maundy Thursday, might be called Jesus Day, when he tries one more time to teach by example and by word what it means to follow him, what it means to be a servant. But this day, Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday, is our day. Yes, it is the day Jesus chose to make a declaration, the day he claimed the ritual and the pageantry of triumphal entry and royal enthronement, Yes, it is the day when he claimed the crown and the throne that was his from the beginning of creation. We don't want want to take away from that reality. If this were only Palm Sunday, then we could just step back and let the parade pass by and let our role be simply one of waving branches and shouting for salvation, which is what Hosanna meant originally, save us. But we also need a reminder of what's coming, of what's unfolding. Palm Passion Sunday then becomes an event that tells the truth about us as clearly as it tells the truth about him. Did you ever think of it that way? Where else could we in the space of one time of worship let collide our full-throated shouts of praise and our bloodthirsty calls for a painful death? Hosanna and crucify should not be in the same week, let alone in the same hour, except That is who we are. That is the condition of our souls. That is the fragile nature of our faith. We can't get away with saying, now that was then and then, and not us and now. If we do that, we miss the point. We were there, or rather, he is here, and this event is here. That leaves this question, where do we stand On this parade day, where do we stand? In the place of judgment, where do we stand? When he stands before us, bloodied and beaten, where do we stand and what do we say? Why do you think he did it? Entering into the city in triumph. For the attention? For the praise? Knowing what was to come, did he just want to soak up a little bit of honor before being subjected to the shame and suffering that was to be his lot? Who could blame him if that was the reason? But that doesn't seem quite it, does it? We've come around to the Hosanna Parade again, that odd little celebration marked by palm leaves and shouting of Hosanna. I wonder if the spectators got it. Matthew got it. That's why he brings up Zechariah's words to help us get the point. The king who comes not on a war horse, but on a donkey of peace. Think about that. Did they get it? Do we get it? They shouted Hosanna, meaning save us, so maybe they got it. But others seem to be clueless, asking, who is this? Did they get it? It's hard to say. One thing Matthew is clear about is that disaster was right around the corner. If there was any hope that Jesus was using this parade to soak up a little goodwill, it would be shattered by the very next verse. The parade didn't end with handshakes all around and a few high fives for a job well done. No, it trundled all the way from the gates of the city to the temple where Jesus turned over some tables and knocked over some dove cages. It literally ended with a rumble. The self-proclaimed king of peace engages in an act of violence that left them shocked and confused. What peace was he announcing? What peace was he bringing? Wouldn't it have been better to keep a low profile? Why did he have to provoke? All kinds of questions come to our minds when we pay attention to the parade on Palm Sunday. Maybe this could be more of a Sunday of listening rather than a Sunday of simple answers. But we have to see what becomes of that parade once he gets off the donkey. Shouts of Hosanna on Sunday. A few days later, shouts of crucify. How much more human can we be? This is the day we are revealed. This is the day our hearts of hope are broken. 
This is the day that the Lord has made. 